some are born to climb, and some are just trying to survive. No matter your climbing capability, all of us oftentimes see the wall ahead and don't really have a plan. Do we attack from the base of the climb? Do we just stick with the pace of the group? There are so many strategies, but oftentimes riders get to the base and end up attacking at the wrong time. So let's find out where the wrong time is and where we should be making our big efforts and opening gaps to the competition behind us. So much possibility remains at the beginning of the climb start banner. Our legs are fresh, full of energy, and we dream of riding away to take first place. But don't let the excess of energy and excitement trick you into attacking from the gun. This could possibly be one of the worst places to make your move, as you haven't tested how you are feeling yet. Have you ever gotten midway through a climb and realized, I'm still feeling really good while you are still with the lead pack? Well, going from the gun, you don't have this opportunity. You may launch a big attack, only to realize five minutes later, you are not in top form and need the pace of the group to back down or risk cracking you. If it comes to this, you may just be regretting that big attack to begin with. In addition, your competitors haven't felt any pain in their legs yet. Along a 20 minute climb, it is easy for competitors to put out a big effort to hang on for the first minute. Think about it. Their mindset is clear, they want to win the race. And seeing an attack at the beginning, they are likely just going to push harder to follow. Instead, waiting till later in the climb is often better. The Pelton will have a few kilometers of hard pace in their legs and may be giving it their all just to hang on. If you attack while the rest of the group is in the red, you are more likely to open a gap. Not only may you get away, but the riders on poor form are likely to begin waving goodbye as the Peloton ups its pace. Even if your attack is negated, you have successfully reduced the group. I always tell myself, attack the steep bits and recover in the flatter sections. Easily, the best place to attack is when the road kicks. The steeper the kick, the better the opportunity to attack. And why is that? Well, for one, Zwift allows your avatar to gain a drafting benefit on any road below 8% gradient. As a general rule, the gradient color aligns with the amount of draft benefit you are getting. Ever wonder why the Volcano KOM tends to end with such a large bunch? Well, it's because it's one of the more flat climbs, as its max gradient is only 8.8%. That means riders are gaining some drafting benefit for most of the climb. Instead of attacking on these flatter parts, wait for when the road really kicks. Let's consider the Innsbruck KOM reverse climb. It averages a 6.9% gradient, but maxes at 14.3%. Even though the average is near the point where no draft is available, you are still better off waiting for the sections that kick the 14 or 15% to put in that big dig. Why? Well, part of it is psychology. If other riders are hurting at 9% and see the wall approaching as you up the pace, they are likely to not have the mental fortitude to match. Just watch here as another rider ups the pace on the radio tower climb. I was thinking, nope. I still have 5 hard minutes of climbing lock. I can't go any further into the red. That covers the psychological aspect, but what about the physiological portion? Well, the body tends to work harder on climbs, as there are no breaks. They must constantly be working to maintain speed. This is why riders are rarely dropped on the flat bits, but dropped on the climbs. As you ride steeper and steeper gradients, you must overcome more gravity to maintain the same speed. If you spend too much time pushing in the red zone, you will deplete your body's glycogen stores and hit a wall where your body has nothing left to give. This is sometimes called cracking, and your body will give you signals. Have you ever started a climb in a certain gear and then realized minutes later you can't maintain it and need to downshift? Well, this is partially because your body is running out of energy. Have you ever been in your smallest gear and thought to yourself, Boy, I still need an easier gear. I know I have. And this feeling tends to come on the steepest bits of the road. If competitors are in this situation, it is an opportune time to attack as their body will be telling their mind it has no more to give and can't up the tempo. So save your attacks for these sections and you may just be able to turn and wave goodbye. There are multiple climbs in Zwift with varying length. Whether it be a 5 minute effort on Leith Hill, a 20 minute effort on Innsbruck KOM, or the 40 minute plus options such as Alp de Zwift or Ventop, each one will require different tactics from the rider. The shorter climbs, you can be more aggressive. Are you coming to the base feeling the strongest in the group? Maybe set the tempo and see what damage you can do. While it's still risky to attack at the base of these climbs, it is more doable as you won't have to suffer as long if the competitors push above your pace. However, 
Ventop and Alptazoya are a different beast altogether. It is pivotal to have a plan and not attack from the gun here. In fact, it is even fine if you don't respond to others' attacks. Instead, I am a proponent of finding your rhythm for the first third of the climb. Essentially, targeting a negative split where you ride the last portions of the climb faster than the beginning. Have you ever rode on one of these and constantly picked off riders one by one in the last half of the climb? Well, this may just mean the other riders set out far too high a tempo and had to back down the watts later on. It is easy to do, as we see other riders and think we have to maintain the same watts. But if you push above your limits for the first 10 minutes, you may be in for a miserable final 30 minutes. If you ride steady the whole way, your body will likely thank you later on. One quote I love is, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And in cycling, it means pace yourself and you are likely to beat out the rider who went all out earlier on and then cracks. But when should we attack on these behemoth climbs? Well, I usually wait until the halfway point. If there are still any riders on your wheel, you can begin riding tactically. If you are feeling strong, you can put in a dig and attempt to ditch the riders behind. But be careful not to sprint, as you still have a long way to go. Another attacking option could be more subtle. You could simply sit at the front and ride a hard tempo. As the riders behind will not be getting a draft, your attack could simply include attempting to ride the competitors off your wheel from a high, sustained pace. And finally, we have the mid-range climbs. Again, here we should let the tempo settle in at the beginning. If you're riding comfortably five minutes into the climb, then you can begin to think about attacking. You will have a good idea at this point if you are hanging on for dear life or competing for the win. But be mindful and focus on attacking the steeper sections. In addition, routes such as the epic KOM reverse, be careful about attacking right before reprieve comes. Chances are, these attacks will result in competitors hanging on to get a draft on the flatter sections. You may find the time which works best for you, but ultimately, you need to have a plan of attack. An attack can consist of so much more than simply getting out of your saddle, blasting a ton of watts. Knowing your strengths will allow you to attack in a way that works well for you. Do you have a strong kick? Maybe then putting in a short, hard dig makes sense. Are you better with consistent tempo? Then you may be better off attacking by setting a hard tempo at the front. This is still considered an attack because you are setting the tone and attempting to drop other riders. If you know your style, go with what works. If you are just beginning your Zwift journey, try out a couple different tactics and find what your body responds better to. In addition, teammates can be critical for an attack to be successful. If you have a four person group and one teammate, a good tactic can be you attacking while your teammate sits back and follows the tempo of the other two riders. If they bring you back, this is a perfect time for your teammate to counterattack while you sit in. This can be demoralizing tactic as the two competitors constantly are responsible for responding. If you keep trading attacks and your teammate gets up the road, while you may not win, it will still build a ton of goodwill within your team and they may be more willing to work for you next time. Just remember, whichever tactic you employ, it is pivotal to have a plan. This may just be the difference between winning a race or getting dropped. Thank you for joining and ride on!